the blowing snowstorm, everything seems to sing. Weekends watching the Muppets. They were definitely a highlight of my childhood. Funny, spontaneous, and just a little bit freaky. Some of the best entertainment going round. Today I'm visiting the original makers of these most famous of puppets, the Jim Henson Company, to find out where puppetry is going in the 21st century. Now they say in the movie business that you should never work with animals and children. Well, maybe they should add puppets to that list. Are we going to be on TV now? Are we going to be on TV? You sure are. All right. You're going to be quiet? I'm so excited. Okay. Hey, Shh, where's guys, the TV? Guys, 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 guys. Wait. Shh, quiet, quiet. Okay, all right. Okay, quietly. Okay. Puppets have been entertaining people going back as far as ancient Egyptian times. Hi. But these days, with TV, DVDs and computer games, you don't see so much of it around. <laughs> or do you? Oh, they're beautiful. Wait. Some wood nymphs. The latest creation from the Jim Henson Company is a very sexy animated fairy called Dawn. She's no puppet, but believe it or not, she has actually been created by traditional puppeteers. She's the demonstration model for Henson's revolutionary digital performance system. That, in a world first, enables computer-generated characters to be animated with good old-fashioned puppeteering. Cantus is one of my favorite characters on Fraggle Rock, probably because I do him. But uh, we use Cantus to convey the idea that music is everywhere. Ever since Jim Henson began his company back in 1955, he has been a puppetry pioneer. First it was with sticks, wires, rubber and glue. Then it was radio and remote controls. And later, hidden cameras. So we've devised something we call Gorg Vision. We have a little tiny television camera that's located here looking out of the Gorg's eye. And that transmits to a picture that goes down to a monitor that's mounted right in front of the performer's eyeball. But by the late 1980s, Jim Henson realized that puppetry in the movies was coming to an end. Animatronic puppets were out and digital animation was in. However, while other companies were shedding their performers for computer geeks, Jim Henson was coming up with an innovative way to keep the art of human performance alive by using his puppeteer's movements to control digital characters. Sadly, he died before computers were advanced enough to realize his concept. Fast forward 15 years, and the massive gains in computer processing power means Jim Henson's dream of spontaneous digital puppetry is now reality. Julianne and Alice are the latest in a long line of Henson puppeteers. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Madge's Crafts. Yeah, Traditionally, yeah. two puppeteers are needed to bring a character like Madge the Bear to life. Alice uses her body, in this case her arms, to move the puppet's body, while Julianne uses hand controls to manipulate the mouth at the same time that she performs the character's voice. After years of puppeteering together, they work in perfect harmony to create a single character. Colors, now you got your pink and turquoise and a little bit of yellow. You can mix them if you want, make it real festive. So, that's the old style puppeteering, now here's the digital one. How's that spine looking? With this unique digital control system, Alice and Julianne can control animated characters like Dawn exactly the same way as they controlled the traditional soft puppets. I bet you have no idea all the wonderful things I can do. I can count. One, two... The digital system uses custom-designed mechanical inputs to directly translate the puppeteer's traditional body and hand actions into the body and facial movements of an animated character in a virtual world. Just as before, Alice uses her body to control the character's body. Well, on the most basic level, it's a one-to-one -one movement with my own body. Uh, the fingers move the fingers, the arms move the arms, shoulders move the shoulders. Of course, I don't have wings, so my wings don't move the wings. But uh, other than that, it's within the exoskeleton, then you just need to find the character. And Julianne still uses her hands to move the character's mouth and eyes. Actually, it's incredibly intuitive to me, especially coming from a hand puppet situation where you're speaking like this, and we've just brought the hand down, and it's still that same movement. And also, when you are operating a hand puppet, you've got the arm rods, so it's just kind of translated into this joystick. 
The computer's software allows her to custom build sets of expressions for individual characters. And just like traditional puppetry, her voice performance can be recorded at the same time that the character's movements are created. This is unheard of in animation, where voices are added months after characters' movements are drawn. It's this real-time control that makes this system so special, allowing digital animation to be directed with the same flexibility and freedom of a live-action shoot. Brett Nelson is the visual effects supervisor. The whole thing's been designed to sort of make you unaware of the tech that's driving it and just to focus on the delivery of character, which is really the core discipline that goes all the way back. I find when, when good directors are working within the system, they always start talking to performers and they start standing by technicians and they start with all the fanciful computers. But the good ones, within an hour or two, will gather around the screens and start talking to the characters. Because that's really what it's meant to do and it's what it's meant to be. Everything... That's who you're supposed to be talking to. And it's who you're supposed to be talking to. The system allows for a level of spontaneity unparalleled in the world of animation, where scenes are storyboarded and scripted years in advance. <laughs> what, do you want me to be more sad? I can be sad. I can be so sad. Do you want me to be angry? Hey, what are you doing? I'm so angry. Anything you want, Mr. Director. And you've got it live, on tape, and ready to go. It's true. Here you go, chips. Hello. And the innovations oh, don't stop it's there. All by myself. We've got okay. good blooper reels. Yes. Unlike other animation companies, we don't have to script our outtakes. We just, uh, <laughs> we just have to be rolling at the time. And, Put it together. The digital performance system is now being combined with the latest motion capture technology from the Motion Analysis Corporation, allowing the body performer an even greater range of movement. And in another initiative designed to bring back the human touch, Henson's have hooked up miniature versions of real camera controls like jib arms and dollies to virtual camera software that is used to compose shots in computer-generated worlds. This means that instead of relying on computer operators, skilled movie professionals like cameramen can now bring their creativity to animated films. Our virtual camera controller is based off of a jib control so that we can hire a camera operator, a cameraman, camera person, I guess, to come in. It's a tool they're familiar with. They can put their hands onto it and drive the camera through the virtual set. Like any other jib controller, you can push in, pull out. It's got a pan, it's got tilt zoom and focus around the thumb controls. And again, we talked to camera operators and asked, you know, is it something that, that feels right? Does it feel like you're driving the camera? And the future? Well, who knows? But around here, you always have to expect the unexpected. I'm shooting an independent film. Uh-huh. Tom Cruise is in it. Oh, wow. And, and Percy the Armadillo. Wow. Mm, OK, action. Can you tighten up on Percy? Okay, Tom, jump on the couch. <laughs> okay, cut. Beautiful. The company has just completed its first animated TV series for children using the digital performance system. It's the story of a badger named Francis, and it's due to be released soon. So nearly 20 years after he first conceived a digital puppeteering system, Jim Henson's dream is now a reality. What's cool about this is they've taken the quirkiness from the puppets in my childhood and put it in the digitally animated shows kids love today. This is definitely puppeteering beyond tomorrow.